Hey, you're not going to video me. I'm going to cut that bit. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> right, this is our uh, little Daddy. box that we deliver to each of the schools for our Mayfly in the classroom. And we use three simple bottles to become the actual aquaria that the Mayfly live in. So get the water out, fill it up with um, river water, chop the top off and turn it upside down and then get some, an airline going in. Um, and I'll send you a picture so you can see what it actually looks like, but it works beautifully. Lovely and cheap, nice and easy, reusable, and uh, can recycle it afterwards. Hey. Perfect. Everything that the school would need, and then they can reuse it. Yeah, too right. I'm going to walk all day, Matt, if you want to here for a minute. Just... And I come from an organisation called the Wild Trout Trust. We're very interested in protecting our rivers. And you've got this beautiful river here, isn't it? It's called the River Kale. Who comes down here quite regularly? Who sees some wildlife when they come here? What things live around the river? Yeah, I saw a kingfisher. You saw a kingfisher? Fabulous bird. Anybody else seen anything? Yes. No. Mayflies. So one of the things that you're going to be doing today is looking, we're going to dip about in the bottom of the river with a net and we're going to have a look at all the different creatures that live in the river. And they're all hugely important because not only do they provide food for our important things like trouts, but they also keep our rivers clean. Who makes our rivers dirty? People that throw rubbish and things, and you're going to be having a little plastic bag in a minute, which has got a magnifying glass in, so you can look nice and close at all the bugs and signs. And I want you to put that plastic bag somewhere very, very safe, because okay, so we don't want that to get into the river. Okay? So the rivers, our lovely clean rivers, are at risk from us, really. We don't keep them clean, we don't look after them, and that's why it's really important that you guys learn about them. Starts off as an egg. Then it becomes a little creepy crawly that lives in our lovely waterways, keeping them nice and clean for us, becoming part of the life cycle of everything else that we can get. And it lives there for two or three years. And then it hatches out. And it hatches out into a mayfly. You may see them this time of year, lots of different flies flying around, creeping up the uh, long pieces of grass, leaving their skins behind turned in into lovely made So that's what we're going to look for. Now the way that you know them is they've got three tails. What month are we in? May. How many letters in May? Three. Three. So we're going to look for three tails. M-A-Y is a mayfly. Okay? Now we're going to look for some big ones because if we find some really, really big ones we're going to take them back to your classroom and over the next week you are going to look after them in special little aquariums in your classroom and allow them to hatch into these beautiful flies and watch them go. <laughs> That's the only one who's actually properly gone in the river. You know, just the most things ever. Have you seen about that? Yeah, there's a proper deep bit of river as well, isn't it? Yeah. What was it like here, you know? No, no, it was, it was a good bit. It went right down. And so, we were seeing video. The day, just pure sad. That happened. But he was looking that way. Yeah. yeah. And he went round and it was too late. And all you can hear is me go. We'll catch up. We found a cased caddis, uh, sorry, a caseless caddis, 
Uh, one, the particular one that likes really good quality water, so it's one of the top oh, water quality that's, that's, that's indicators. Now there's a little tiny invertebrate that lives in the water that is green and looks just like the hungry caterpillar. He's called a caterless caddis. And if we have him in the water, it shows that our water is really nice and clean. If he won't stay, he'll swim away or he'll die if the water isn't nice and clean. So we've already learned today that this river, what river is it? The River Kale is nice and clean at this spot. Okay, so I'll come round with these. Something really interesting and different. I'm going to put some water in here. You can all have a spoon and we'll carefully dip out what you think is really interesting and we'll dip it in here. Yeah. Just take the big blue guys. Yeah, just take the big blue guys. No, this one's. Oh, careful, little creature. You're going to be free again. So the only reason it leaves the water is to be able to find a mate so that it can then lay eggs and start the next generation. See what you've got here? You've got in here at this nest. You've got the nymph. So we're going to take it. Is that the thing that we thought was drowning? No, he's not drowning. He lives most of his life in the water and then he just comes out for one day. That's it, perfect. Let's think that one as well. He's really good. Let's put it in. Yeah, it's really good. Yeah, well, he wriggles his body. Well, that's because he's used to living under the water. Look at him. No, it's not a mayfly. I've just seen it. See if you can find him. It's a newton. It's a newton. It's a Two them in the pot. And we had one in the pot. Really? You put them in the pot, did you? Yeah. Yeah. And I got some very full heads. 50 years. Not 50 years. 39 years. It's really lively. It is lively, isn't it? And it's big. Who's going to that one? That swims like I do, that does. <laughs> what, it sinks? <laughs> oh, the caddis, yeah, back and forth, back and forth. Look at that. That's a good tray as well, isn't it? That is a, that is a, I would say, that looks like, I'd have to check my chart, that might be a flat body. They take it back okay, down and all the time great. It's just absolutely great. I saw someone over here. It's like a He's got to live with his friends, as you say. And he's got to back in the river. Because what happens is the, um, the river creates oxygen. Catch. Okay, I don't know. Has anybody heard of Catch? The, the river group in Wincanton? Yeah. yeah. Good, 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 good. So you should be putting your hand up. <laughs> yeah, well done, well done. So there's a few of you here. Okay, well by the end of this, you're all going to know. Okay. Catch. Um, we're basically a group of, of dads and mums in, in the town, okay, and just outside the town as well, who are trying to clean up a local river. We're trying to make it a little bit better down here so, so children like yourselves can come down and enjoy it. Because when I was a little boy, not that long ago, I used to come down and go fishing down here. Okay, and over a period of time, the river's got maybe a little bit forgotten, and, and lots of rubbish has gone in, and, and bicycles and things, and, and all sorts of stuff. So we do, we do little cleanups organized cleanups okay so that's one that we did last year and that's the sort of things that we pull out of the river now is that anybody's bike here no no oh yours is it right <laughs> you did ride it back didn't you just about so that's the sort of things we throw out and what we find is the more rubbish that goes into the river the uh, more people tend to throw rubbish into the river which is really sad so by pulling rubbish out of the river and getting it looking cleaner and nicer for the animals it's a good thing the rubbish is really really bad it looks bad okay so it doesn't look nice when you see lots of rubbish along there does anybody chuck their rubbish down when they're walking and throw it down no i bet you don't know because you're good um we spend a lot of time as volunteers picking up things like this okay anybody know what that is correct that's right yeah all agree 
Yeah, okay. So these go around cans. Now these are really, really bad news for, for wildlife. So what happens is, creatures get caught inside them and they can't get out because they haven't got hands like us. And they get caught and birds get their beaks caught through them. So they do a good job keeping your cans together. But what I'd say is get mum or dad, and as you get a bit older yourself, just to cut through them. So you snip through, snip through, snip. Okay, so then they're broken on them. This one's quite outside tearing it. And that way, when it goes into the bin, it's not going to do any creatures any harm. Okay, so that's a really, really good tip there. Who feeds the birds at home? Oh, it's everyone. Yeah, yeah. Big birds. Okay. And do you get these like fat balls that come in these nets? And you put them in. And everybody take them out of the nets, do they? Everybody take them out. Take them out. Yeah, good stuff. Once again, very important. You can buy them. Ask mum and dad not to not to buy them in the nets if they can help it. Um, but again, when the fat balls are in the nets and they're in the bird feeder and you're having a great time, there is a slim chance that a bird can get to your feet caught in the net. So once again, net, you know, to our wildlife is bad news. If you want to come and join us on a river cleanup, okay, which is good fun, bring mum, bring dad, bring everybody down. Very, very family oriented. We have a lot of fun. We eat cake, we drink tea, we have orange juice, sometimes sweets, so. Yeah, okay. Hot cross buns, yeah. So, and we have a great time. It's, it's really good fun. And all the mums and dads have good chat. So we'd love to, we'd love to see more people getting involved. Little story. That's a lovely picture of a really handsome chap. All right. Okay. David Beckham. Thank you very much. Well done. I like you. Okay. No, it's not. It's me. <laughs> oh, it's David Bellamy. You won't remember him. No. Um, this is me down in the river last year. And when we we're going along the river, I don't know if you can all see that. Okay, what I'm holding there is a horse's jawbone. Okay, so that bit there on a horse. And I pulled it out of the river. It wasn't doing any harm in the river because it's an organic thing, it didn't matter. But base, basically, in short, I was wondering why, why is that in the river? How did it get in there? And on a chance conversation with a guy in the pub, what people used to do is, about a hundred years ago, the cow had lots and lots of eels in. Does everybody know what an eel is? Long black thing. Long black thing. Uh, in the sea, there is electric eels in the sea, but not, not in a cow. They're, they're very, very friendly, and we've still got eels in there now. But they're long, black, like snakes. Unfortunately, I haven't got a picture today, but next time we'll see if we can get one. And what they would do is, when a horse got very, very old, and it passed away, okay, chancing that a little bit with a story, they would put the horse's head, okay, in the river. All right, see the boy's starting to smile now. They put the horse's head in the river, with a bit of rope on it, and then overnight, all the eels would go up and they'd start getting inside it and, and eating it. It's all a bit yucky there. So who watches horrible histories? Brilliant, okay, thank goodness for that, right? Okay, so the eels go inside the head and they all get inside and they're munching away. Now, people used to eat lots of eels, still eat a fair amount now, but in England, we used to eat lots and lots of eels. And what happens is, is the guys will come down in the morning, they pull it out on the rope and the, the big horse's head comes up. And of course, what's inside it? Eels, yeah, yeah, exactly. No, we don't stamp on them. And what the children would do, they'd all jump on the eels, they put them into a bucket and put the lid on, and then they take them home, and then they would get eaten because they're very, very good to eat. Now, we don't eat eels now if we can, um, because eels are a protected species. Certainly, the river cow it doesn't have many, and eels have had a bit of a bad time. And one project is we're trying to make them, you know, make the river better for them. All right. So, do you have a question? No, good. Right, okay. So that's that's that one there. So hopefully that wasn't that one too yucky for anybody, was it? No. 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 What's the next thing that's gonna happen to our neighbors in their life? Hello. Something's got to happen to them. They only live one day as an adult. So how are they going to get from a little creepy crawly nymph that lives in the river to an adult? They have to shed their skin. So I'm going to get you all to do that now so you understand the life cycle of the mayfly. So how does it start off? As an egg. So I want you all to get really, really small for me and be a little tiny Egg. Okay. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah.
sunny day in May, they decide to sleep happily, or stem, leave the river behind, and oh, something funny happens in their back. What's happening in their back? They've got wings coming out of their back, and so they've got to step out of their old skin and get lovely big wings. She can fly around with it. Here is a mayfly. It's her first day on Earth, but it's also going to be her last. Mayflies live only for one day, but is she sad? Not at all. She's happy to be alive. What a beautiful day. Imagine if you hatched today. This isn't any old day. This is the better day. She lives for each moment. There she is with her beautiful wings and her beautiful long tail. How many tails does she have? Three. She sees the world begin. She hears the crack of dawn and she bathes in its golden glow. There she is up with the first light. What time does it get light at the moment? It gets very early in the morning. It's very early in the morning. Yes, probably about five o'clock in the morning. So she has quite a long one day, doesn't she? A billion buds burst open, all for her. She smells the honey. May sees eggs hatch, baby born, and lambs learning to stand. Anybody seen any lambs in the food? Yep. So all that's happening, she sees all of that. The busyness of ants and the dizziness of children. The loveliness of all things. I think there's probably a little mayfly that's hatched this morning and is flying around here watching us thinking, what fun to be playing about in the river. She feels the sun's warm hug, the kiss of the summer rain, and the magic of a rainbow. It's her wedding day. The trees throw confetti and there are games on the lawn. Breezes blow, bells chime and birds sing. She dances to the music of the universe. You listen. Quite pretty, isn't it? Mayfly lays her eggs. She goes back to the river to lay her eggs. It's a peaceful night. It's the best of nights. She makes one last wish. Little ones, may all your tomorrows be as perfect as my yesterday. So there she is. She's what's called spent. That means she's going to die now. But the important thing is she's had an amazing day and she's got the next generation of little mayfly nymphs coming along. Mayfly watches the moon come up and the stars go out and she's thankful for her wonderful life. So it was quite a cool day, wasn't it? Today's a good time to come out. Now why are the mayflies so important to us? Why are they so important to our river? What do they tell us about the water quality? That it's clean, which is really important. And what part do they play in the life cycle of other things that live in the river? Yeah, they provide eggs and things, so they're actually food for everything else. And one of the important things that mayfly does is they eat through all the bits of material leaves from these trees, mud and muck that comes down the river, they help to clean up. So they're only tiny, but they're very, very important. And what you've done today is be able to identify some different ones. We're going to take them back to the school and hopefully hatch them out. Hopefully before your half term. Otherwise, Mrs. Brady will be having them at home. <laughs> <laughs> okay, any questions at all? Who would be brave enough to tell me which one on here is the really important invertebrate that we found today? Yes. Describe him to me. Oh, that's very good. Give me his name, the caddis, yeah. So this one here, you're right looks a bit like the hungry caterpillar 
So you'll remember in future, when you see him, you'll know that it's really, really important showing us we've got water quality that's really good. And you can see on here as well, is our lovely mayfly. drilled hole on the end. Out of the pump box. And to take an air So I can put those in the bottom of here for you. So the mayfly then have got their food. Okay, so if you can then stand around here a minute, please stand there for me. When these are full of water, they're going to be nice and heavy. At the moment, they keep falling over. Okay, but when I get back to your class, I'm going to fill them full of water. Okay, and when I fill them full of water, the other thing I'm going to do with a pen is draw a line you'll see a black line in it, okay? Now you need to look for that every single day because if the water goes below that line, what are you going to have to do? Refill it, okay? To top it up with just some in the water. So I'm going to draw a line in it and you see from that. So that's one of your daily checks. What other check do you think you might need to do each day? So you don't actually put hot water on your tails, do you? 
No, you put a hot water in a bottle and then put your toes on that. This is the same. So we're going to make it nice and cold on the outside so the water inside will stay cold as well. So you can all see roughly what it's going to look like. It will stand up a lot better when it's full of water. Now, you might say, how are those mayfly going to get out of there? What happens next? So where are they going to live to start off with? They're going to be living in the water. But we want them to hatch, don't we? We want them to emerge, get that wriggly feeling in their backs, and get those lovely wings coming. How are they going to fly away? Yes? Yes, so each day you need to check and you need to let Mrs. Bradley know, uh, Brady, sorry, know if you see one of the flies, because they, what they will do, you know down at the river we're looking for leaves and things and they crawl up a piece of leaf in order to get to the air. They haven't got a piece of leaf here, but they have got this lovely air tube. So they'll crawl up here and they're all under here. So when you see one, you need to shout quick. And then what we'll do with a little box like this, which has got some air holes in it, catch a mayfly on the little brush and pop it in there. And you can take him outside and let him go. Any questions? Okay, right, well we're going to be really, really hopeful that it won't happen at the weekend. The first weekend you've got is tomorrow. So take Saturday tomorrow, so they're not, well, we've picked ones that won't be hatching tomorrow. And hopefully they will hatch during the week next week. Alright? If they don't, Mrs Brady is going to take them back to the river because you've got half a term, so you can't leave them ten days, can you? Um, so they should hatch next week for you. And I will come up to know, please, if any hatch, you need to let me know. Maybe take a picture of one for me.